Hi all, I am Nitesh Goyal and welcome back to our channel ML4 Analytics. In this video tutorial, we will be studying about it how you can set up a simple Microsoft SQL database in Azure and as well as how you can create a server for it in Azure only and we will be checking that uh, we will be testing some uh, you can say sample data over it and we will be creating some users as well uh, providing them different DB roles of course so let's jump on to it so first of all open your Azure portal and you can also create a free account for it if you want and you will be getting all the services which are being covered in this tutorial then search for SQL database click on SQL database click on this add button on the left side so here you have to provide all the basic information regarding your database so let's start with the first one the subscription for me here it is free trial if you have a paid account then you will be getting pay as you go option in this and over here you can create a resource group however I have already created a resource group for myself that is ML for analytics and this resource group is very useful because whenever you are trying to research any resources in the resource panel then you can filter them out on the basis of resource group so let's move on the next it is asking for is the ML database name let's give it MLDB01 and for the server since we don't have any server right now we can create one now there are two options for it either you can go to the MS you can search like um, SQL server service in the Azure and create a server separately or just create click on this create new option and enter the details over here and the server details like can be MS server 01 or you can say ML server 01 for us and let's say the admin name is Nitesh that is mine and provide your password over here and choose the server location that you that, that is up to your preference for myself I am choosing the default location that is East US and for the server I have to just click OK over here and it will become over here like this is the server that we have created for or you can just say it is still not created however when we will be deploying this database it will then be created uh, do you want to use elastic pool we will be coming to that in our next tutorial for this one we are creating only a standalone SQL databases so let's let it be default no and for the storage or the compute power you can configure it over here by default it provides us the DTU service and that too of the standard in the standard format you can choose the number of DTUs over here and the maximum data size I will let it be 10 DTUs and for the data storage 2 GB storage will be sufficient for us and the other options are like premium option which is not available for our free tire and vCore services it provides us G general purpose and vCore is different from the DTU DTU is like a combination of compute plus storage everything is being uh, used in parallel at one place like computation power is divided for read write and IO processes and for the RAM and everything is combined in the DTU unit database transactional unit you can say and vCore is like you can specifically provide power to your you, you can you choose the cores for your CPU as well as your for RAM for example like this I can choose for the CPUs or the two CPUs over here basically they are being represented by core and this is the max size limit that we are choosing and depending upon that the pricing also is being updated over here and this is for the provision one there is option also that is serverless in serverless you can provide a range of details like 0.5 to 1 DTU or 2 DTUs the maximum cores that it will be using are 2 DTU 2 cores and the minimum cores that it will be using are 0.5 the advantage of serverless over the provisioned one is like provision bills per hour 
this bills per second so by doing your billing per second it is providing you more flexibility like if your database is being vacant or there is no operation being done over your database for the time for that time period it will pause your course and you will not have to pay amount for that time period for which your course are being paused so in this way you saves a lot of money over the standard provision fund so for our demo i will be choosing the standard of dtus and that to with 2 gb storage and 10 dtus let's click on apply so here is our compute plus storage amount 10 dtus 2 gb storage and you can always change them after creating the database as well so it is not an issue as per your requirement just update the things afterwards in the networking uh, you can choose that which ip addresses you want to provide access like you can provide public endpoints private endpoints and then you will have to provide the ip addresses and all by default it provides us no access by default that is no one will be able to connect to this server and access its data and we will be moving forward this with this only as after configuring this database when we will be trying to access data with ssms we will update that entry so let's move on to the next step that is additional settings so here the data source you can choose like either you can choose the none that will provide you a blank database or you can if you have a backup then use that backup database considering it is present on the azure only or somewhere else and also you can ingest your database with some sample data being created by azure and most of the times it is as adventure data works only so in the collation part it provides you this value that is the default value for the collation that is in which format that your strings will be saved in backend of the database considering you are comparing data between two databases then make sure that this collation scheme is or collation rule is same for both the databases otherwise you may face some errors while comparing data between them and for our demo purpose i will be creating a sample for you so let's click on sample and we will be skipping this enable advanced data security for this demo so let's click on tags for tags you can provide like values like environment development whatever you like it is as per your choice so let's move on and here we can review all the specifications that we read and if you want to do other pricing and pricing details then just click on this link and it will provide you the pricing details for our region the prime region is east us database name is mldb01 server is ml server01 compute and storage comes under s0 scheme of dtus and 10 dtus 2 gb storage so let's create this one considering that you are creating your server for the first time and we didn't have any server it may take around 10 minutes in the worst case scenario however in the best case it might take only two or three minutes so let's skip this part and let's move on to it so guys our resource is ready it is deployed our server as well as our database so let's go back to the resources and check out what we have got over here in the resources we can see that we have a server name ml server 01 let's click on this and go to the ml database sql databases over here and you can see that there is the database that we have just created so as we didn't select elastic pool so there is no elastic pool for it and this is our default server name and in the firewall option you can select all the IPs that you want to whitelist and everything else so let's try to connect to this server or the SQL database using SSMS let's copy this value and here it is the server the admin username that I set was Nitesh and let's add the password over here as you can see it is asking me to sign in over here 
because our IP is not whitelisted. As you remember, we selected no uh, while in the networking portion, we selected no access. That is, no source will be able to access it. To resolve this issue, there are two, two solutions. First one is, I can just directly sign in over here and it will provide me the access. The second solution is, go to the set server firewall. Then, as you can see, this is my client IP address. And this is same as this one over here. And we just need to add this value so that it can be whitelisted and we will be able to access the data. So just click on add client IP and you get your client IP is over here. And if I will be pressing on save, I will be able to access that. And one more thing, if you want to do the extra security, want to add extra security onto your database, just click on this. That is TLS 1.2 as this is the latest TL service provided by Microsoft and it is most secure for the moment and let's just click on save okay so it is saved and let's go back to our SMS and skip this one and just try again connecting so it is connected perfectly and under databases we can see we are having the database MLDB01 that we just created and in it we will be able to see all the tables or sample tables being provided by Azure and they corresponds to the, uh, like I said, adventure works. So here are the tables and right click on it, select on select top thousand rows and it will show us the data. As you can see, we have got all the columns corresponding to that. And this table that is product table contains 295 rows and they are all over here. Now one thing to notice over here is I have currently connected with my admin user to this. What if I want to add a new user which only have read only access to it? That is can that can be simplified also. Under this database, here is the security one. Just click over it, go to logins. The default login is the admin login over here. So instead we will be creating a new login. Let's say test user. Under this just remove this portion and add the username whichever you want let's say test user for me and let's create a password for it let's say this is the password and execute now this has created a login value for us now i will have to create an alias corresponding to that db as well and provide that role to this user that whenever this user log, logs in for the TV, this MLDB01, which kind of role it should have. So for that, we can do things like this. Again, go to security under users, click over here, new user. Let's name the new user as user01. And for login that we have just created that is test user so what we are doing over here is for the login this is the main user that I will be adding as a username while connecting to a database for example if I click over here earlier I over here that I will be providing test user for the login and this user 1 or user 0 1 is a kind of alias which can which will be used to map what kind of db role or should be provided to this login id test user whenever it is trying to connect with mldz01 so let's update these and for the timing we don't need this so let's remove it and for the db owner db owners means kind of admin so instead i would like to provide it to the like database read only access for the roles that you can provide it go to the roles and then go to database roles and here it is db data writer just copy it paste over it and over here provide the username or the alias that we just created and let's execute it complete it successfully complete it successfully now let's try connecting to this mldb01 database using test user 01 or you can say test user so one thing to note over here is last time we didn't provide any database we only provided the 
server name, username and password. However, this time go to the options under this panel connection properties provide the DB name over here mldb01 then go to login again and provide the password and it connects successfully again so since we have provided it only read only access so ideally it should fail to delete any table in this and let's test that one as well in this lecture only after that we will be trying to update this access roles and then like db owner then again try to delete it so we can verify that we are getting this correct access roles over here so let's move on to with that so guys here is the databases here is our database under the tables let's try to drop this table go to over here delete click ok as you can see that it failed today and we got this message cannot drop the table customer because it does not exist or you do not have the permission we can clearly see that this table do exist However, we do not have the permission, that's why it failed. So let's try updating this role for this user and provide it to be the DB owner. And let's execute it. Now let's try to drop the table sales LT customer address. As you can see, this command succeeded successfully. And if I try to run a select command over here, then we will not be getting anything from it. As you can see, it throws the error invalid object name sales LT dot customer address because this table has been successfully deleted over here by a user test user because we updated its ownership that is DB owner. And one more thing to note over here is that if we go to the MLDB01, we can see that how much compute power it has used or the DPUs it has used. And if we check at the performance, the maximum performance or the DTUs it has used is like 22%. And over here we can see that it also went from around 10%. This is the around 22% peak. So all these kind of data can be monitored through the Azure only. So guys, this is it for this video or the lecture and this demo. In the next video, I will be covering about like how we can create an elastic pool for the multiple standalone SQL DBs or you can say how we can make sure that those multiple SQL DBs share single resources or the common resources and which will help ultimate, which will ultimately help us to save some money. So guys, please do subscribe and comment and share this video and like it and please let me know in case you want to study something else or a specific topic in this related to azure i will be covering it for you so guys have a nice day thank you very much